Thanks for joining me. Our topic today is a beginner's guide to focus stacking. If you're new to photography and you're looking on social media, you've probably seen people say, oh, this image was focus stacked. And at other times you might see, oh, this is a bracketed set of images and they just display one image. Today, we're going to talk about focus stacking and focus stacking is very different to a bracketed set of image because a bracketed set of images is commonly called a HDR image, a high dynamic range image where you blend three images, one underexposed, one correctly exposed and one overexposed and you blend them together. The reason you do that is so that your dynamic range increases. Focus stacking means that you're taking a set of images, no matter how many, could be three, could be five, could be 10, could be 20. And you're wanting to do that to get the correct amount of depth of field in your image. Whether you're shooting macro, whether you're shooting landscapes, whether you're shooting a flower, because the reason you're doing this could be varied. For landscapes, it means you want your whole scene sharp. Even at f16, if you're focused a third of the way in, right at the background, it will still not be as sharp as if it was focus stack. But there are drawbacks to focus stacking. And today I'm going to show you that, but I'm also going to show you how to do this in Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. Before I show you how to go through that, I want to show you some examples of why focus stacking works and also the drawbacks of focus stacking. If you have a camera like my Nikon Z62, you can do this automatically through the camera, but sometimes there are drawbacks when you leave the camera do its own thing. Because if I'm photographing a certain subject and I want the background blurred, then using the camera is not going to give me the results because it's going to say, okay, well, from front to back, for example, at f4.5, I'm going to need X amount of images, but you might not want the background in focus. You might want that blurred. So you're going to have to do it manually. Let's start off with the first set of images here. Now the image on the left was taken at f16 and I photographed on the succulents right in front of the pot there. The image on the right was taken at f4.5 but stacked. There were seven images in here. Now look at the background. Can you see that the image at f16 is quite sharp in the background? Whereas the image at f4.5 is much more blurred. F4.5 was the minimum aperture that I could use on my camera at this focal length. If you had a lens that was at f2.8, but imagine at f2.8, the background would be so blurred. Here now are the focus points that I use. So each image, I move my focus to where I wanted it to. You gotta remember when you're practicing this, so this is a beginner's guide, you have to work out how much depth that field does f4.5 give you. And the way to do that is just take one photo and then look where that blurred line is. Because if you say, okay, well, from here it's focused and here is blurred, then you divide the distance saying, okay, well, I'm not going to wait until I can see it's blurred because it won't be sharp between that. So you say, okay, well, it's sharp here, then I'm going to move it halfway between the two. And you just keep moving backwards. And this is what I did on this day. And it doesn't matter if you go from front to the end of the succulents to back again, as long as you've covered all the plants. Now there are eight images in this set. So this is the first one. This is the second. This is the third. This is the fourth. This is the fifth. This is the sixth. This is the seventh. This is the eighth. You can see how my focus points just moved all the way around. And I ended up with this image here, which I'm very happy. It still gave me the opportunity of blurring the backgrounds so I could highlight these succulents. Sometimes you have to remember that weather plays a critical part when you're focus stacking because you've got to make sure that nothing in your frame moves. And here I was out the back photographing some agapanthus. And what I didn't realize was there was a slight amount of breeze. So as I went from one flower bud to the next and then came back, the first flower bud that was right in the front moved a bit. And here are the images now. You can see this is the first one. This is the second. This is the third. This is the result. Can you see how it's blurred? Because it moved between frames. But notice that the palings between the first two flower buds and the last one is blurred. 
This is what I was trying to do. I didn't want to have the fence all the way from front to back sharp. And if there hadn't been any wind, I would have ended up with a beautiful image. This shows you that nothing is perfect. So when you're focus stacking, you've really got to make sure that the elements are in your favor. Whether you're using the camera to take all the photos or whether you're doing it manually. You've got to make sure saying, okay, well, here I'm trying to photograph some flowers that are moving around a bit. I'm not going to try it. I'm going to wait to another time when there's no breeze around so that everything lines up correctly. So in this one here, I'm down at a local lake called Lake Eden. This image was taken at F16. This one here is the stacked image of five images at F8. And the reason I done that is I wanted to get from front to back nice and sharp. If we go back to the F16 photo and we zoom in, we can see that the background isn't as sharp as the stack set of five images at F8. Can you see that the clouds moved? It looks like the clouds ghosted. That's because just like the flower photos, now it's the clouds, the clouds moved a bit. This is where it would have been advantageous to use the camera in the bracketed set and it would have done it all for me. And it would have been much quicker because if I'm doing it by hand, it's taking me some time to move my focus point around. And here are the focus points. You can see I start from the front, went further in, further in again, then onto the railing and then onto the background to get the whole image from front to back nicely in focus. And if the clouds hadn't moved, I would have ended up with a great image. Now let me show you how you do this with Adobe Lightroom Classic and Photoshop. So I've opened up Adobe Lightroom Classic and you can see that my image is edited. Now the easiest way to do this if you're new to this is you edit your first image and then you highlight all your images, whether they're five, seven, 10, whatever, you select them all and then you just click synchronize and it will just sync all your settings across all the images. Then you go from the develop mode to the library module and we just select all the images here. We have five images, I right click on it and here it is edit in. Now you don't wanna be clicking on edit in Adobe Photoshop because if you do that, then you're opening five separate images. Remember this is stacked. You've got to come down to the bottom here and say, open has layers in Photoshop. And that way it will just open up one at a time on top of each other, just like you're stacking books. So we say open up as layers. Now Photoshop will open up and it'll just open up our five images. And once they're all opened, then we'll move on to the next part. So now you can see our five images are here. We just grab the last one, hold the shift key down, and we've selected our five images. Now we go to the edit panel all the way up the top here, and we click on auto align layers and just auto. The reason you do that is if you just move slightly. I forgot to mention that really all this should be done on a tripod because although it's going to try to align, if there's too much movement, then it's not going to work for you. Best to do this on a tripod. So we click auto, click OK. You can see now it's saying auto selecting layers. It's just lining them all up. They're still all selected. Now we go back to the edit panel and we come down to auto blend layers. And here we have the option of panorama, or stacked images. We click stacked images and see right down the bottom here we have content aware. This is going to fill in where it hasn't lined up properly. Now we just click OK. And here we see blend selected layers based on your content. Now the faster your computer is, the faster this happens. And that's it now. Now you can see the ghosted clouds. And if I unclick, all we do is just come up here to layers flatten image, that's it, it's flattened it. I just hit the, the cross here to close the image because if I close it like that, it will auto save and go back into Adobe Lightroom. So I click it, it says save changes. I say yes, it'll save it. Now I go back into Lightroom and here it is here. And you can see the ghosting here. This is how easy it is to do it. If you have a Nikon Z series camera, you can do this automatically inside your camera. And these are the steps that you need to take. So you've got to go into the photo shooting menu and the first that you see is reset photo shooting menu. Instead of going down, you have to click to go up and it shows silent photography. We want focus shift shooting. So we go up one 
now we've got focus shift shooting and on the toggles you just click OK and now it'll show you a screen saying start number of shots focus step we don't want to start straight away we want to set up this menu so next one is number of shots and you can see here it's 20 that doesn't mean that the camera is going to take 20 photos that means that you're telling it maximum of 20 so if you've got a very big scene and you've selected let's say an aperture of f2.8 and it hits that buffer of 20 shots it's not going to go any further most of the time 20 is enough but if you're shooting macro at let's say f1.8 and you want your whole scene in focus then you might have to go to 30 but I've never found that I've needed to go over 20. The focus step switch I leave it at 3. Interval until the next shot it's zero. You want this done as quickly as possible. First frame exposure lock you've got to set on on and forgot to mention that you really should be shooting in manual you don't want aperture priority or shutter priority you don't want any of your settings to move so you want everything to be correct so your camera has to be in manual mode next is silent photography some people like using silent photography for this I prefer to have it off because I like hearing the shutter go off so I know when the camera has finished next one is starting storage folder you can leave this alone or you can say you want a storage folder like this I click new folder it means that whenever you use this if you're taking three sets of the same thing it will make a separate folder so you know that all the images you've taken the three sets are not all joined together in one folder they're all separate so I say new folder it comes back once I've clicked OK to starting folder then I just click start and the camera shoots off and if I wanted another set then I can just click start again but once it's taken the set you'll see that it'll be on start but it'll be grayed out gotta press start again that's how you do it thanks for watching the video I hope this tutorial has shown you how to start off focus stacking your images if you've liked the video give it a big thumbs up stay safe enjoy your photography and I'll see you next time